Hello everyone. So I'm going to continue uh, creating some more details for these textures, uh, this, this base textures that we created. So right now, uh, before starting, I want to show you like what I like to do for having a, a better interaction with the viewport in Substance Painter. Right now, the mesh that we have here is not very low res mesh. It's kind of it has like a high amount of polygons. And also the textures that we're using are kind of high, like uh, we are aiming for a 4K resolution texture. So uh, right now, if I try to, you know, rotate the camera or, or make some movements or adjustments in the in the parameters of the generators, like it feels pretty heavy. It feels slow and sluggish. So if you want to improve the performance of your viewport, you, the first thing that I recommend is deactivating the shadows. You can activate them when you're going to, when you're about to do your screenshots or something like that. But if you deactivate those now, like it's it's way better to work in the viewport. Also, if you don't want, to, or if you don't need to see the other pieces when you're working in a in a specific part of your asset, you can just deactivate or you can just go to solo mode. And this will increase the speed of the viewport like a lot. So I, I really recommend you to do that. So you can see almost like in real time the the, the changes that, or the adjustment that, that you do to the parameters. All right. So the two improvements that we're going to add here is going to be one layer that will add a, some dirt all over the mesh, all over the asset. And this is, uh, I'm adding this because I wanted to integrate the asset to the background or to the environment. Like, uh, let's, let's imagine that this asset is sitting in a, in the desert or something like that. So it will have some, uh, dust and some, uh, sand falling in the deepest, uh, uh parts of the mesh. So that's pretty easy to achieve. So I'm gonna let's let's go ahead and, and create that one. For that is what I do is as I explained it that in the tutorial already, we just create a fill layer. Let's just rename this one to dust. I'm going to make just a little tweaking just to just color to make it look more like sand. And then I'm going to add a black mask that will control that effect. Uh, of course, uh, before that, I'm going to go back here to the main layer and I'm going to change the roughness to be very rough. Okay, back again to the mask. I want a generator to control that mask. So I add the generator. And uh, in the library, we already have a generator that will help us very, uh, will help us a lot with this effect. It's called MG Dust. And uh, as I apply it, just with the default settings, you can see we already have like a nice uh, dirt and dust coming here. And, and this is and this being controlled by the ambient occlusion map and the world space normal map that we baked from the high model. So now we can just play a little bit with the settings to get a, a nice looking like dust effect. And there are no rules for these settings. We just, uh, you just play, uh, with these three sliders. And when you get something you like, you just let it like that. And, uh, for me right now, it's, I don't want it to be pretty heavy. So I just want to, I just wanted to have a little bit of dust. As I told you before, it's just a way to integrate it with environment. And the next thing that I want to do is to add some variation to this paint. Uh, if you if you look right now, it doesn't have any variation in color or roughness. So I want to add some detail to it. So a way to fix that, if you don't want to go back and fix like the layers or your main shader in Substance Designer or whatever, you just can, can go uh, over here and add an extra fill layer, this is going to be called like variation. 
and uh, let's go ahead and we don't want to control the metal properties of it or the height material, the height properties uh, of it. So just discard these these ones. Then I'm going to add, as always, a black mask, and then a generator. The generator this time, as well, is going to be one of the <coughs> library generators. This time it's going to be the MG Grease generator. And uh, as well, you can just tweak a little bit the settings and until you get something you like. And then I'm going to go back to the main layer and deactivate the color. I don't want it to affect the color. I just wanted to have some variation in the roughness. Right, if you like, you can go further away and try to, to you know, add some variation in the color, like something, you know, like something like that, probably. You know, to have some variation or whatever. But uh, for me, it's, it's I, I will only make the adjustment on the roughness. So that will add a, a little bit more of an interesting uh, feeling to the to the asset. And now uh, I will give you some recommendations uh, when you want to render this or you want to take screenshots from these uh, final textures. So I'm going to go out from solo mode. Uh, I'm going to put this one in a better environment that probably we like more. Uh, let's see. We like this environment, or I like more this environment because uh, it has a nice contrast on it. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and work on this one. Uh, one of the important things that I like to use is post effects, and those post effects, uh, uh, the most important things is probably the anti aliasing uh, In this project, because the texture is very high, and it has a, a lot of small details. Like uh, when you don't use the anti-aliasing, it will look almost like noise in some parts. So for some projects, you probably want uh, like that. You probably want a sharp and crisp texture. But in this one, it looks kind of uh, very noisy. So I will activate the anti-aliasing. Also, other thing that I usually like to do is to play with the contrast until I get something I like. For this one, let's say I will change it to 1.05 just to get some more uh, nice contrast. And also, in this version of Substance uh, Painter, you can play with the uh, blur of the environment. So uh, when I when I do uh, some changes on that. I also like to play with the with the settings of the lens, like uh, that you have here in the depth of field uh, post effect. So I activate that, and this this one works pretty much as it works with your camera. So if you have a more aperture in your lens, the bokeh effect is going to be higher. So what I do is just to make it uh, strong enough to blend a little bit with the environment in the background. And then you can adjust like the point of interest or the part that you want more sh uh, to be the most sharp in your image. So in this case, it's going to be around the nose or the cheeks. And there you go. Now it's kind of integrated with the background. And uh, one important setting here is the glare as well. Uh, you notice that as I change the glare, also the background is being affected. So you don't want to be like very overexposed in the background. You want some nice reflection or some nice bounce of the light from here or highlights from the metallic parts. And one thing that uh, if you created an emiss uh, em emissive map uh, for your asset, you can control that directly in the viewer settings 
and you can add some emissive intensity. In this case, I will just put put it to the maximum, and then start go back to the post effects and start playing with the settings. So now the lights are oh, very like powerful, and you can also like place your light in a better place or in the place that you like. And once, uh, of course, once you're happy with that, it's time to activate again the the shadows. And if you're happy with that, then you just can save your screenshots, and that's it. You can uh, play with different environments and uh, different uh, settings for the contrast or whatever you want. But uh, I think this uh, you don't need to play with more settings than this. Like probably this lens distortion, it's not really needed, or you know, it, it depends on, on on what you want, but. I think with, for a nice result, uh, this will be enough for you. So I hope it's helpful and thank you for watching.